Fossilised bones aren't the only way to study dinosaurs. Preserved footprints also offer clues to their prehistoric lives. Now, some of the biggest trackways ever found in the UK have been discovered in Oxfordshire. Scientists hope it'll help them understand even more about how dinosaurs moved around. Our science editor, Rebecca Morell, reports. Following in the footsteps of a Jurassic giant, this is where a dinosaur walked 166 million years ago, its footprints revealing the comings and goings of a prehistoric world. But it wasn't alone. Different trackways crisscrossed this entire site. They were discovered on the floor of a limestone quarry in Oxfordshire by one of the workers. So what I was doing, basically clearing the clay, and I was hitting a hump. So, so like, like yeah, this, this yeah, it was, here? As it turned out, it was this front bit I was hitting and I thought it's just an abnormality in the ground. But then it got to another, about three metres long, it was hump again. And then it went another three metres, hump again. And when I got out and examined it, it looked like footprints. And the weird thing about it was, uh, it was when you sit there, it was like I'm the first person to see them. Yeah, it was a bit, yeah, a bit of a tingling moment, really. Over the summer, scientists, students and volunteers joined the dig. They discovered about 200 footprints, some stretching for 150 metres, making it the largest track site ever found in the UK and one of the biggest in the world. This is the first trackway that was discovered here. It was made by a sauropod, a huge long-necked dinosaur. But the team quickly realised it wasn't the only one and they found footprints from two more sauropods as well as from a smaller meat-eating two-legged dinosaur called a megalosaur. And they think that there are plenty more of these waiting to be discovered here. The area was once a tropical lagoon and the tracks were made as the dinosaurs walked across the mud. But something happened that stopped the footprints from being washed away, possibly a storm that covered them up with sediment, perfectly preserving them. So the really lovely thing about a dinosaur footprint, uh, particularly if you have a trackway, is that it is a snapshot in the life of the animal. You can learn things about how that animal moved, you can learn how fast it was moving, you can learn exactly what the environment that it was living in was like. So tracks give us a whole different set of information that you can't get from the bone fossil record. We're coming up to a dinosaur crossroads. What you have here are footprints from a sauropod and you can actually see as it pressed down into the mud how it created this ridge here. There is also a footprint from a smaller two-legged meat-eating dinosaur called a megalosaur and it was moving in this direction. The question is which one walked through here first and scientists think it was a sauropod because you can see how the smaller megalosaur footprint slightly crushed down this ridge as it was walking through. At the Oxford University Museum of Natural History, a megalosaurus specimen is one of the world's most important fossils. Megalosaurus was the first dinosaur ever named anywhere in the world. So this exact fossil, this is the real one in my hands, this fossil started all of the last 200 years of dinosaur science. The whole animal would have been between six and nine metres uh, in length. And in life, this animal would have had these impressive uh, serrated teeth all the way along its jawbone. These were agile, carnivorous predators. They, they were the largest predatory dinosaurs in the Jurassic period in Britain. The future fate of the trackways hasn't yet been decided. The quarrying will go on here for several years. But paleontologists think there are more footprints, echoes of our prehistoric past, just waiting to be discovered. Rebecca Morrell, BBC News, Oxfordshire. Well, let's speak to Richard Butler, co research co-lead and professor of paleobiology at the University of Birmingham. Thank you very much for joining us. What was your reaction when you uh, learnt about this discovery? Well, I got to see them um, a number of months before um, uh, before they were, you know, we did the excavation. So when they were first discovered by the one of the quarry workers, and I thought this was just one of the most remarkable track sites I'd, I'd ever seen anywhere in the world. And then as we uncovered more and more of it um, last summer, it became more and more remarkable, and the, the sheer scale of it really became apparent. Why does it matter? So it matters because um, you know this is part of our kind of our, our shared 
um, history, really. This is this is part of the history of of, of the United Kingdom. Of the, of, and so these tracks formed 166 million years ago. It's, um, they they tell us about what life here, where we are today on this island, was like in, in the in the middle of Jurassic all that time ago. So we can reconstruct the environment. We can reconstruct the animals that uh, that lived there. Um, we can understand more about how the world that we're in today came to be and what was li life was like deep in the past. And why do you want to know more about how these giant creatures moved around? So we have lots of information from, from bones of dinosaurs, lots of dinosaur skeletons, but they only tell us so much. Um, so they are kind of a snapshot, uh, the, the death of an animal. What tracks give us is a snapshot in the life of an animal. So they're an actual moment one of the reasons they're so remarkable, when an animal walked over a surface that's been preserved in the fossil record remarkably for 166 million years. So we can take that and we can learn things we wouldn't be able to learn otherwise about how these animals walked, um, how they interacted, their behaviour and so on. The imaging used on this site, which helps bring all of this to life, I mean, how typical is its use? I would say now it's becoming standard so we, we use drones to uh, image the site um we took something like twenty thousand photographs we'll be making very or well, we have made already very detailed um 3d photogrammetric models of the site this is becoming the standard way that we would um, record these kind of sites but actually tracks were discovered very close to this area back in the 1990s um and we didn't have that technology and so a lot of the data from those original discoveries has been lost so what we're able to do now um, using kind of technology like drones is, is make permanent records of the site, which will be used by scientists for, for, we hope, generations to come. How do you preserve it? Can you? Um, well, so it's, it's still an active working quarry. Um, so and it will be an active working quarry for some time. Um, so there's ongoing discussions between ourselves and the, the quarry um, operators who've been very, very supportive of everything we've been doing uh, and Natural England about the future of the site. Um, it may not be possible to preserve it um, in its form, uh, current form, but um, we will have that permanent digital record and that allows us to, to study the track far into the future. It also allows us to share it with the public. So whatever happens to the physical side, we will have that digital record. Professor Richard Butler from the University of Birmingham, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.